So I've resetted everything and reapplied Stardust in its initial state. This is how it looks by default. And now we are going to discuss the Turbulence node, which is one of the most powerful in the plugin. In order to help me to show it to you, I'm going to once again use one of the presets. So I'm going to click over here and under HUD, I'm going to scroll down and use this guy, Turbulence Grid. And I'm going to click replace in order to replace everything that I have over here. Now, just a quick overview. We have two emitters and two particles. Both of them are based on a grid system. And just so we'll see how this is working without the turbulence first, just so we'll understand what we have over here. I'm just going to switch the FX, which means the visibility for it over here. And then I'm going to switch off the grid the first one so we'll see this is the first grid and then the second one is something which is a little bit more condensed both of them are feeding into this node which you can apply on your own by clicking on this button over here the three waves all right so let's switch it on to see what we are getting basically in its default state now this is based of course on a fractal noise map that displays the particle in 3D space, but it can do much more. First, we have a couple of types that we can choose from. So this is the normal type, which will allow you to use those settings over here and control the displacement. So you can randomize the turbulence, which will create some sort of a motion to the particles because they are not tied together anymore. You can change the origin of the turbulence on X, Y, and Z. You can set a different position to affect more or less of the noise itself. You can scale the offset, color the offset, change the opacity and rotation. All of those parameters are behaving more or less like you will expect them. What is more unique and different is this over life turbulence in parentheses in percentage. So think of this graph as a representative of the timeline over here. So this is how the particles are being affected by the turbulence across time. If I'm going to add, for example, a point over here and change the appearance, we can see that at the beginning there is no turbulence and it's slowly going to affect them across time. And as before, you can click on the presets and choose one of them in order to investigate it further. But this is what it's going to do. So in this example, I'm just going to move my playhead over here where the turbulence effect is in its higher course. And then I'm going to play with the scale just to show you what this guy is doing. We can play with the noise levels if we want to make it more precise or maybe more simpler. So let's take it all the way to zero to create this kind of look. This is very, very flexible. And I just want to remind you that if you have a camera in the scene like I have over here, you can just press C and just take a look at this from different angles to get a sense of how this will affect your creation. And so moving onward, you have the amplitude, you have the frequency and the speed. And this is what's controlled the animation because this is actually moving across time using the values that we are seeing over here, the frequency, speed, and of course, evolution. So you can animate and control each one of them on their own, or you can just use one of the offsets for the X, Y, and Z. You can also change the turbulence type from normal to spherical. This, of course, will change the method of the turbulence that you are applying to the particles. And of course, you can work with Spherical 2, which will give you different results. So once again, I invite you to play with those settings and see how they work. What I want to concentrate over here is the less obvious, but very, very useful axis mode. So in order to demonstrate the axis mode, once again, I'm going to climb up and choose one of the presets, which helps to explain it, I think, much better. So I'm going to pop into the HUD category, scroll down and call the rectangle preset and replace everything that I have already in the scene. I'm also going to change my camera view to something like this. I think it will be more obvious to see it like so. And let's just see what we have from the get go. So this is how the preset is behaving. Once again, we have one emitter three particles which are creating those nice colorful shapes 
And by the way, we can just choose maybe different colors from them. So in this case, color from gradient, I'm just going to use one of the presets. And let's go with something that we haven't used until now. Go with color 16. So we can see how this is going to look. I'm also going to change the other ones because I just want to create pretty stuff on screen. This is of course just me. You don't have to work like this. Everything is going to work even without those colors. But you know, if we are here, let's just invest a little bit more time to make it pretty as well. So basically I've just chosen the same theme for all of those particles. Now let's just collapse what we don't need to see and concentrate over here in the turbulence section. Note that now this turbulence type is set to the axis mode, meaning that now it's actually animating only on the X axis. I'm just going to continue to play it and change it on the Y axis. So now you can see that the turbulence is only going to affect those particles going up and down. And I think the most exciting one is the Z one, which is going to create this kind of an animation, which is probably more difficult to create in any other tool inside After Effects. Now, if you want, you can obviously continue to control the offset between those particles but this will allow you to create some really nice motion graphics effect only with one instance of Stardust. So obviously this illustrates the power of this node system over here to create some very sophisticated stuff with the very important turbulence noise in Stardust. <laughs>